Welcome. In this video, I want to just take a quick look, hopefully quick, uh, look at uh, the area of a parallelogram. Now, a parallelogram is, of course, four-sided figure. Two sides are they have two pairs of opposite, uh, parallel sides. So this side's parallel to this. This side's parallel to this. Uh, this all goes back to the idea of the area of a rectangle, which, if this is a two by three, I'll be really lazy about this. Um, it's kind of like putting down tile. How many of these are supposed to be one by one? Obviously, they're not the same size, but just pretend in your mind. Um, so if I were to tile it out, I would need six tiles. So I could see the area is six. Well, you can see that the three times the two will get me to that six. And it works all these that way with the rectangle. So we, uh, in math, refer to the part that holds it up as the base. So we put a B there. And of course, how tall it is, we refer to as the height. So really, the formula for uh, area of rectangle is base times height. Well, parallelogram, it's the same thing. The only difference for parallelogram and a rectangle is that parallelograms are kind of like neglected buildings. You ever see old buildings that start to fall down? Well, that's how this is. Once upon a time, this is a beautiful rectangle standing nice and tall, and now it's kind of fallen over, and it's a little bit dangerous. Uh, but in order to get the area, I still need to consider the idea of how tall it is. I can't use this distance because it's no longer there. At one point it was sort of straight up and down. But in order to find the area, I still need to use base times height, but the right angle becomes much more important to me. Uh, so what I'm going to have to use is this little extension referred to as, in most cases, the altitude. This number doesn't represent any of the sides, none of them. Uh, what it represents is how tall it is from the ground. Uh, if you were to measure how tall a chair is and you laid a broom over uh, like over the back of it and the broom's seven feet long, the chair's not seven feet tall just because you can push the bottom of the broom out as far as you want. So you have to measure how tall it is from the ground. So put your finger or pencil or whatever on the right angle and then circle the parts that make up the uh, right angle components. Here's one of them. That would be my height, so 3.4. The base would be either the one on top, which is 11, or the one on bottom. It's the same thing, so it really doesn't matter what you pick. So 11 here. And you put the units in there because in real life, units actually matter. Sometimes we forget that and we just want to get to the answer as quickly as possible. But units are everything. You know, there isn't a lot of math uh, in terms of measurement and things like that that doesn't have a unit involved, so we should treat it with respect, I guess. 11 times 3.4, because we're doing base times height, right? Uh, just like we did three times two earlier, I end up with 37.4 centimeters. And now, because I'm doing centimeters times centimeters, if you multiply things together like this, it's an old algebra thing, uh, this is really centimeters to the first power, and this is really centimeters to the first power. So properties of exponents say I need to add those two together, and I end up with centimeters squared. That's what's going to go right here. The reality is that centimeter squared means that it's a two-dimensional measurement. Area measures not only how long it is, it also measures how tall it is, so or the distance length of the base and the height together. You can't go up with in one direction with area. You have to go sort of, well, the base is staying the same, and then the uh, height's changing or whatever. You have to have some sort of two-dimensional figure to measure. So really, this squared says 37.4 centimeters in its two-dimensional uh, measurement. So that's it. One more, and I think we're good. The key is, of course, to just find that right angle and then use the part that's connected to it. This is the perfect example of that. It's kind of ugly. It's not the best-looking parallelogram, but you can see that the sides are parallel. It would be really easy to think, well, this one's this 10.3 makes a lot of sense, so let's just use that. We're using our old area equals base times height formula, but here's my right angle. The two lines that make up that right angle are here, 5.8 and 8, right there. So this would be my base because it's a part of the actual um, parallelogram, so I'll say that 8 yards is my base, and my height would be how tall it is, even though it's kind of slumped over. Sometimes you don't have the altitude uh, or, you know, on the outside to sort of help you find that corner, so you just have it here. I mean, it's the same distance, so height of 5.8 yards. Once again, this is going to be a two-dimensional measurement, so I'm going to do that, um, and then I just need to do 8 times 5.8, and I end up with 46.4 yards. 
squared. And that's it. Air parallelograms really easy. The only time it gets any diff, uh, any level of difficulty in it is when you start having multiple things or multiple measurements to use. So just find that right angle and use it kind of as your uh, starting point, and then everything else seems to work out much easier, and it's a, a lot quicker to get the answer.